Hi, this is Rosemary, and I'm going to show you how to finish off the hat you started in our last session. Um, so one of the things I've done, if you'll notice, I'm in different clothes than I was in the last session, and that's because I let my hat sit overnight. Some people say you can't do this, but you can do it to some extent. Once you get it laid out, you can walk away from it for a little while. The key is to keep it wet. So even though I left it overnight, I made sure that there was water on this to keep this nice and wet so the wool didn't dry out so that that linking would continue to occur. And what actually happens is the felting continues as I'm gone. So the next step is to just press. And we started pressing in the last session, right at the end of the last session, we started pressing on this hat. Now there are some keys to pressing well on this hat. You're going to do this for probably at least an hour, maybe more, depending on what you see with the wool. Now I've already started pressing this, but you can see how I'm using my fingers to press this. I'm using my fingers, I'm shaping them like this and like this, so that I have a little edge here that's already working the edges there. And as I'm pressing, I'm using a gentle rowing motion, and I'm also doing this, and this is key. I have a gentle inward press, which means that I'm pressing it against the resist. I can feel the resist as I push right here. I can feel that sharp edge of that resist right up against my wool, and that's what you want. Otherwise, you'll get flaps inside your hat. So if you'll let me continue to press for a little while, then we'll be back, and we'll talk about the next step to finishing your hat. Okay. So once you've padded this with that nice gentle rolling motion, and when you're padding it, you should see that you should be seeing that soap just pop up between your fingers and remember that gentle inward press. You start to realize that those fibers are linking, which is so exciting. And one of the ways you can tell this is by lifting up just a little bit, just a tiny pinch, and can you see right there that what happens is the fibers don't come up separately, but it comes up as a cohesive unit there, and that means that your um, fibers are starting to felt. So I am starting to rub. Now when you rub, you want to rub it just like you're patting a new puppy, just ever so gently, because we don't want those fibers to move still, and they still have the ability to do that. So there are two things that I watch for as I start to rub. One is I, start, I, I watch for pilling. Now there's not much in here. I do see a little bit where I have a little bit of pilling started, and you can see the fibers begin to roll, and I'm just going to rub that right down in there. And flatten that right down in. And notice the technique I use when I want to make sure those fibers are linking in here, uh, where I find fibers that might not be linking just the way I want them to, is just a little jiggle. So I'm not going to do a big push like this. I'm just doing a little jiggle with those fibers. So now I'm just going to gently rub that. I'm not going to rub it real hard. Just gently slide over that soapy, that soapy wool as I do that, sometimes I'll start with just little tiny movements to make sure that I'm not moving those fibers. And I'm going to do this for about another hour. So I will leave you and notice that as I'm rubbing, I'm making this little corner with my thumb and I'm making sure that I felt right along the edges, right along the edge of the resist so that the top of that hat and so that the seams of that hat are being felted. So I'll be back in a little bit and you can see what happens as I rub just a little more. So I've been rubbing now for quite a while and where I started out rubbing just like it was a soft puppy, now I'm really starting to rub hard on this. And as we rub in every step, we're always aware of the shape of our hat. So while we're rubbing, we're doing, a, it started out with as a gentle inward press, now we're going to rub inward. We always want to keep that wool up against the resist. And what I do as I rub inward is I gently let my fingers run over the edge so that I'm felting the edge as I'm going. And I'm felting quite aggressively now. So by the time we do this, we're starting to pour off that soap and replace it with just plain clear water. There's still quite a bit of soap in this, and that's okay. Let your hands slip. The time for getting rid of that soap will come. But the next step we're going to do is something called palming. Because although we've worked this side and we've worked that side of our hat, 
quite vigorously now so that we have some really good felt on both sides of the hat. One of the things we want to make sure is felted is the inside of the hat. Notice that I just flipped this now with no problem. It's now one cohesive unit and chances of you getting this apart are pretty slim, but we want to now start bringing those fibers closer and closer together. So what we're going to do to felt the inside is something called palming and that means that we use this part of our hands. Up to this point we, when we started out, we started out just using our fingers and doing that just a gentle rolling motion to, to bring the fibers together. Then we started a gentle rub. Now I'm rubbing and I'm using this part of my hand, this fleshy part of my hand, which brings a lot more uh, pressure and friction to it. And now we're going to palm on the outside with our fingers on the inside. And this works like a little washboard to give some friction here. And we just palm like this. This helps felt the inside of the hat and to harden the outside of the hat. So as we do this, we just move right around everywhere on the inside of the hat. By the time we're done palming, this resists that's on the inside of the hat, we can slip it right out. One of the things we want to do while we're in the palming mode is to take and rub those seams nice and smooth. And as you can see, you can't see that seam at all because we were very cautious about how we built those seams up uh, earlier on in our process. Although the layout took a long time and it would appear that this is happening faster, um, it's really important to know that the layout is at least 50% of your time. It'll take you at least an hour or two to lay out. And although this takes a couple of hours to get to here, um, it still takes much longer to, um, it, it, to shape it, but the layout takes quite a long time, and be patient. Layout is a good deal of, of, of the creation of a hat because that's where your initial shape gets put into effect. So I'm going to keep palming now, and you'll come back when I get to the next step. But I'll palm everywhere along this hat inside. So I've been palming this on the inside. You can see that my resist is now no longer needed for the inside of this hat. So I am going to, and it's a little hard for me to start stop palming or to stop at any stage, but now we are going to just pull that resist out and we're gonna to work to remove some of this soap that's in here. The first way we do it is to take this hat and to roll it up just like this. It's now one cohesive unit. It's not going to come apart. It's pretty much felted. It's still a little spongy, which means it's not yet ready to be shaped. So, but I have just taken this, and if you'll notice, already my hat is smaller than my resist. You always want to make sure that your resist is bigger than your hat. By the way, it's a great way to wash off the porch floor. Um, that so but then what I do to help harden that wool is I use the wool itself as friction and I rub that against itself so I'm going to do that for a little bit now just rub that wool against itself and sometimes I'll brace my two elbows right up against here because we are rubbing this hard we are no longer being gentle with this wool it's it's pretty tough it's not going to come apart anymore we've been rubbing on this and patting on this so Join me in just a little bit, and we'll get some more soap out. But this is going to take another while longer. So, so far, you planned on spending about two and a half hours uh, pressing and rubbing and doing that. Sometimes it takes shorter, depending on the sheep and depending on the wool. But I always make sure that we spend just enough time doing that. Uh, with, with wool that felt faster, you'll get it faster. With wool that felt slower, it'll take longer. And you just have to get uh, used to your wool. Now this one just, so as you can see, I'm just finishing up rubbing this together and I want to get a little more soap out of it because now the more soap I get out of this, the closer these fibers are going to get together. But as you can see, we've got a hat. It's just about ready for shaping, but once again, I want more soap out of it. Here are these little places on the edges, which are a little bit higher. It's better than having them lower. I just give a little tug right now while it's got some give to the wool. And that brings that right down so you can see no matter which way I go, I have a nice smile in my hat, which means I've pretty much got a round hat. So that's pretty fun. So your shaping worked and it's got a great hat. Now I'm going to get some more soap out of this. And the way I do it is to dunk it into a bucket of clean water 
or sometimes I'll do it at my kitchen sink and I'll run it under the clean water. So I'm going to drop this in some clean water right here. And as you can see, all that dirty wool, there's no more dirt coming out of this anymore. And then the next thing I do is squeeze this out. Remember, whenever you wring out water, you don't twist. You only squeeze. Now this hat is just about ready to shape because I've got it pretty hardened. And as I shape it, it will fill up a little bit more. I like to shape my hats when they're a little bit spongy because then they, uh, they shape better. So in just a minute, we'll come back with the hat shaper and we'll start putting this hat into shape. I'm going to keep rubbing it and hardening it. So I'm finished up rubbing this hat and getting rid of most of the soap in it. We still like a little tiny bit of soap in it because it helps our hands slip. Now notice, I have a hat shaper here. I used to use head shapes. They just don't work as well as a good old fashioned bean pot because this bean pot has this curve in the side of it that makes a really nice sharp turn for the brim. So I'm going to take my hat, and this bean pot is just about the size of a human head. I have a big one and a little one, so this is a smaller human head. So I'm going to put this right on top of the bean pot, and you're like, oh my goodness, that looks terrible. But it doesn't. It looks great. Um, and the first thing we want to do when we put it on the bean pot to rub this in shape is that we want to make sure we've got it right in the middle. And I'm trying to, I just kind of eyeball it a little bit. To make sure it's in the middle. Look how wonderfully we have this wonderful round brim that goes along with uh, this. I'm, I tug a little bit in places. We've still got a little give so that I can shape that just the right shape. A few wrinkles, a little flip up. None of that is a worry because this wool has not yet been shrunk. So as I rub, this wool is going to become shaped like the bowl because this wool will shrink. Now the thing to remember as you're working with your hat, as you're wringing it, as you're rubbing it, is that the direction you rub is the direction it's going to shrink. So notice we have this little pokey up part here. Sometimes I'll shape this like this and I'll get a little fedora shape to the top of it. Um, but this one, I think I'm just going to make around what we call open crown hat. It's one of the most traditional hats that they wore during the mountain man era. So, and to do that, I want to make this sit down flat. So I'm just going to rub this right here as hard as I can on the tray. And it doesn't take very long for this to, to start to sit down and to start to get rubbed into the shape that we want it to be shaped in. So as I rub it, I'm now getting that open crown shape that you see, oh, probably about 18, 20. And I'm just going to take some time to do this. Notice that all of those wrinkles go away. That's because the wool is now becoming closer and closer together. There's still just a tiny bit of soap in that, and we want that tiny bit of soap. Don't worry about any of these fibers that come up, these short little fibers that come up. You now have enough fiber in this and enough linkage in this that those are just hairs that you just as soon get rid of anyway. Guard hairs and fuzzy hairs, then you're not hurting your hat at all. At this point in time, you almost can't hurt your hat unless you over shrink it. And even then, you can stretch it a little bit. So as you can see, while I've been talking to you, I already have this shaped the way I want it to be shaped. And then I'm going to start rubbing on this brim. And the more I rub, the more it shrinks. I'll start doing some things on this brim to shape it like this. And I'm just going to rub for another long time to get this hat into the shape I want and make it shape in that bowl. I'm gonna go right in there in that crease and really work to get this bowl be, being this, not this bowl, this hat being the shape that I want. So I'll be with you in just a minute after I rub for a while. As you're working with your hat, you may find that there's a part of your hat that's not shrinking up just the way you want it to. So that's what the washboard is for. This washboard has this rough edge that adds quite a bit more friction to it that really shrinks it up. I use wood or metal because the glass is just too fragile to be rubbing as hard as we're going to rub. And then I take my fingers and right along this edge, I lay both of these fingers right here on my brim. And then I push down hard on that washboard and I can shrink up that brim. 
Now, I'm not going to shrink up this bling too much because this is pretty much where I want it to be. But that's all you need to do to stiffen up that brim just a little bit more is do a little bit washboarding on it. Now, unless you think this is fully formed, let me tell you how I got here. When we were last looking at it, I was rubbing it on the washboard. Know that after rubbing it on the washboard, I did a few things to it. I literally took the edges and I rubbed it just like this all the way along. And I'm going to show you right now how I did that because although this hat looks fully formed, it still has soap in it. So usually I fully form the hat, then I take the hat and dunk it right in water and make it lose its shape. But I also want to make sure I have all soap and dirt out of that hat. And you can do this after you make your hat to reshape it if it loses its shape. Once again, this is cold water, and I'm going to just squeeze it out to make sure that I get whatever dirt I can out of it. Then I can take this hat, and I can reform the hat just like this. Notice it still retains its shape after I've put it back into the water. But what I did to get this wonderful shape is I just kept rubbing just like this around the edges, and I kept rubbing like this to bring this hat into the size that I wanted it to be. So literally, I'm sculpting with the wool. So once I had done that washboard, I just kept rubbing this hat until it, the brim became as stiff as I wanted it to be. Then, to get this little edge here, there's a little trick I do with my hand. It's one of the reasons why I wear these rings, because they add friction, and I put my hand right here, and I push up on this edge. Now, I like the finished look of an edge like this, but there's another purpose for this edge. And that purpose is to help this edge hold its shape. If you'll notice on hats that are made or pressed in machines, they often have this edge to them. This helps the hat hold the shape or hold that circular shape. It's kind of like a hoop skirt around the outside of your hat. So I usually do put a brim like this on my hats. It's not necessary. It's just the way I like to make my hats. So there you have it. This hat is just about done. And what I'll do is I'll leave it out to dry. It has some water in the hat, so if I pick up this hat right now, it's gonna have a little bit of a floppy brim. It'll still hold its shape, but the water has some weight that will make the brim of that hat go down, uh, fall down just a little bit. But as you can see, I can put this hat right on my head and it fits great. It's a little big for me because I have a pinhead, so I make my hats a little bigger than my head. And it will dry, and the brim will become even stiffer as it dries because it won't have that water weighting it down. So that's it. If you followed along with both of these uh, tutorials, you've made a hat too. It does take a little time to do, um, quite a few hours. When I have students, they work on their hats all day long. So have fun making your hats. And if you have any questions, put them right in the comments and I'll see if I can help out. So thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.